Act. We're calling on full transparency and openness from the Chinese Communist Party, not just to the United States. It's really China's trying to, the Chinese government tries to make this about China versus the US. It's not. We're not the only country that have called for an investigation. The Australians have, the Germans have, many in the United Kingdom uh, have called for transparency. Even the EU's foreign minister admitted that the EU have been naive about China's intentions. So we really think um, that the world is, is is waking up to this. Um, and, and the Chinese government needs to understand this isn't about the blame game. Uh, this isn't about even retribution. We're trying to get to the bottom of a pandemic that has wrecked havoc around the world, that has destroyed, killed lives, destroyed economies. We're trying to get to the bottom of it. Uh, so that way we can make sure that the world never has to deal with a pandemic of this scale ever again. Just what exactly is the U.S. State Department's position on the origins of the Wuhan coronavirus? How has this pandemic effectively become a test case of democratic versus authoritarian governance? And what should the relationship between China and the United States look like in the future? In this episode, we sit down with Morgan Ortegas, spokesperson for the U.S. Department of State. This is American Thought Leaders, and I'm Yanya Kellick. Morgan Ortegas, such a pleasure to have you on American Thought Leaders. Thank you for having me. It's my first time. Great to be with you. You know, Morgan, uh, there's so many things I want to talk to you about related to China. This has been a big topic on the show uh, recently, of course, uh, pertaining to coronavirus, some of the difficult realities around that. Before I jump into that, you know, one of the things that uh, we noted when we were preparing for the interview is that you pointed out Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, just at the, yes. at the top of the month. And yeah. I think it's particularly appropriate for a couple of reasons. One, that we were actually founded by Chinese Americans back in the day, 20 years ago, to speak right. the truth about communist China. Uh, and, and of course, this is what we're going to talk about today. But why, why is it that you're marking this particular month and at the State Department, Secretary as well? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we obviously really value the contributions that uh, Asian Americans and Americans uh, of Pacific heritage as well contribute uh, to our diplomatic corps. Uh, we have uh, we have actually a very strong contingent, uh, as you know, at the State Department, um, and uh, our ties uh, to Asia, to the uh, Pacific Islands, uh, of course, uh, it goes back generations. Um, in fact, I was just with Secretary Pompeo. Gosh, I guess it was last summer already. Time really flies uh, in this job. Whenever uh, we went to Micronesia and visited uh, and visited several islands there, and it was just—I uh, don't know that I've ever seen him smile so much as I saw him smile uh, on that trip. It was just really wonderful to be um, in a place that just value that values America. Um, every time we go to Asia, uh, we meet with people that uh, are really on the front lines of communism and authoritarianism versus democracy and freedom. You almost don't see that anywhere else in the world like you see uh, when you go to Asia. So we're proud um, of the contributions that Asian Americans uh, and Americans with Pacific Island heritage and th th what they contribute not only to the State Department but to America in general. And that's why we thought it was crucially important uh, to highlight their contributions this month. So, you know, let's jump right into it. What do you make of these uh, allegations, some of them coming actually from uh, uh, Chinese uh, Communist Party spokespeople and so forth, that, you know, assigning location, i.e. China or Wuhan, to coronavirus is a racist thing? Yeah, I, I mean, as you know, actually, and you can see this uh, from the folks at the State Department who read Mandarin, uh, have pointed out to me uh, that uh, obviously it was the Chinese Communist Party that first pointed out uh, that this virus emanated from Wuhan and, and, and were, were assigning uh, uh, the origin in, in Wuhan. Uh, that's just a fact, right? The fact that this virus emanated from Wuhan um, and, and from China is, is just a fact. Uh, now, what we're really calling on is to understand more about the origins of the virus. We're calling on full transparency and openness from the Chinese Communist Party, not just to the United States. It's really China's trying to, the Chinese government tries to make this about China versus the U.S. 
It's not. We're not the only country that have called for an investigation. The Australians have, the Germans have, many in the United Kingdom uh, have called for transparency. Even the EU's foreign minister admitted that the EU had been naive about China's intentions. So we really think um, that the world is, is is waking up to this. Um, and, and the Chinese government needs to understand this isn't about the blame game. Uh, this isn't about even retribution. We're trying to get to the bottom of a pandemic that has wrecked havoc around the world, that has destroyed, killed lives, destroyed economies. We're trying to get to the bottom of it. Uh, so that way we can make sure that the world never has to deal with a pandemic of this scale ever again. Well, since I have you here, um, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, there remains some confusion about what the State Department's position is around the origin of the virus. And I wanted to give you an opportunity for the record just kind of to spell it out. Um, I, sure. Even people are calling me and asking me questions about this. So yeah, what, what, what do you, we understand today at this moment about the origins of the virus? Well, the, the reality is, is that we can't say for certainty where this virus emanated from. And, and that's what Secretary Pompeo pointed out this morning when he was briefing the press at the State Department. Uh, we know that the Chinese Communist Party has told the world that this virus emanated from a wet market. Uh, now, what we also know is that the underlying data uh, that needs to be provided to credible scientists and doctors who would do a peer review of that data and analysis and also verify that claim, that hasn't happened. So maybe it did emanate from a wet market. I don't know. None of us will actually know until we have the data behind that for credible scientists and doctors to prove. Um, as the secretary pointed out, he has seen uh, a lot of circumstantial uh, evidence related to the lab. You know, I think people are conflating uh, the issues. You know, be, uh, obviously it's possible for a natural virus to emanate from a lab. It doesn't just have to be a man-made virus. It's also possible, as many in the intelligence community have pointed out, that things can accidentally leak from a lab uh, without it being a, a purposeful or, or an intentional leak. Uh, so what the job is of the U.S. government is to work with like-minded, credible, and independent scientists and doctors around the world uh, to find out, can we get the data, can we get the proof? To, to, to validate one of these theories. And, and all of this, whether it's from a wet market or a lab or somewhere else, that uh, another theory that we're not thinking of it, all of this uh, is circumstantial uh, and without certainty until the Chinese Communist Party opens up to the world, allows incredible scientists and doctors to verify data. That's simply the point that we're making. So what do you make of the fact that we know that some of that data was actually destroyed, including the wet market being, you know, basically wiped out from what I understand? Yeah, that's um, that makes it very hard to, to prove a theory. Uh, I think the Chinese Communist Party just wants the world to trust them. Uh, we certainly believe in verifying that trust. You'd say that this is about this isn't about blame, right? And mm -hmm. it's not about politics. So this is what Secretary Pompeo said today. Um, right. At the same time, um, the secretary is calling for account of clear accountability. And what, what's the distinction here? Well, the, that's a good question. I think the distinction is is we've got organizations um, like the WHO, uh, you know, for example. Uh, that should be um, a, a, above reproach. They should be above influence, uh, especially any sort of nefarious influence from any country. And they should be calling balls and strikes uh, and being able to say, you know what, we can't verify X, Y, Z data uh, and, we need, and we need that data. Uh, so that's really what we are, you know, that shows the stems from some of our frustration and the reason that what, we have a pause and review of funding of the WHO and a review of their activities and what reforms uh, they need, because we do need our multilateral agencies to work. We need them to be um, independent. Uh, and we need for, uh, for somebody to have a credible voice uh, to be an independent arbiter of, of this information. You know, another thing that the secretary has talked about is, and, and I think you alluded to this earlier as well, is just this kind of need for trust 
to develop and when you, to work with I think reliable partners is the is the is the term that I heard first of all you right. know what reliable partners does the United States have out there right now and I think you're also arguing that China has not been one you know that's a great question I think it's, it's been the pandemic has been such an interesting test case of authoritarian uh, governments versus democratic governments. Uh, and it's amazing. When you look at authoritarian governments like China, like North Korea, like Iran, um, you see the, the, the illegitimate dictator in Venezuela. Um, when you see these authoritarian regimes, uh, you see countries in which we know that they are uh, underreporting the number of COVID cases in the country. I think North Korea said they had no cases. Sure, miracles happen every day. I don't think that's one of them. Um, and you also see in these authoritarian regimes, not, on, not only do we believe that they are under reporting uh, the data of the number of cases, they're also uh, likely grossly under reporting the number of deaths as well. So it's very hard whenever you look at the, you know, at the, at the projections or the various numbers coming out from around the world, it's hard to compare apples to apples to authoritarian society, societies versus democratic societies, where in democratic societies, uh, there is transparency. Uh, people demand to hold their government account. You know, you get to see this in the United States every day. You get to see the press uh, questioning the president, questioning Secretary Pompe Pompeo, often and very vigorous exchanges. Uh, those type of exchanges you would never see uh, in China, I never see a questioning of Chairman Xi the way you see it of President Trump. So I, I, I think that this has been, um, if anybody was was sort of curious about how do uh, uh, authoritarian societies handle a pandemic versus democracies, for me, it's crystal clear now more than ever that type of transparency you only get from free and open societies. And we just wish, and Secretary Pompeo said this last week, what we wish for the Chinese people and all people, people of Iran and, and other nations that live under these uh, authoritarian regimes, we wish for them the freedom and openness that we cherish as Americans. So the Chinese ambassador uh, to the United States says, I'm going to quote this because I had it in front of me, China has done its yep. best to share information about the virus. Great. Well, there's still a lot more to be done, Ambassador. Open up the country. Let, in, uh, let incredible and independent scientists and doctors to verify your claims. It could happen tomorrow. I think we're at, Secretary Pompeo said, I think we're at 120 days and counting, waiting on that to happen. So Morgan, actually, something that the Secretary does, which uh, we find very interesting and important, is he often s basically delineates a difference between the Chinese Communist Party and China. He says very clearly, Chinese Communist Party, This the, the distinction might be lost on some. I'm wondering if you could speak to why he does that. Well, we think it's very important to remind Americans and to remind the world uh, the true heroes of the, uh, the true early heroes of the COVID-19 pandemic. And those are the Chinese doctors, the Chinese scientists, the Chinese journalists, the people that risk their lives uh, some of them uh, to blow the whistle on this pandemic. Some of them died from COVID-19. Some of them, the, the government made them disappear. Some of them were told, as you alluded to earlier, to, to destroy uh, their work and to stop talking. Some of them imprisoned. So we are grateful at, at all people around the world in the healthcare profession, but especially those early Chinese doctors and scientists who risked everything to blow the whistle and to tell the world what was truly happening. So we want the Chinese people to know that we can only imagine for them how much more effective and creative and, and um, ingenuitive they could be if they were living in a free and open society that allowed them to speak and allowed them to debate without risking their lives to do so. Morgan, you know, one of the allegations made about the idea of holding China accountable is that the administration wishes to shift blame away from itself. What, what would be your perspective on this? You know, that, uh, that's interesting. Um, I hear that criticism. I know from having worked for Secretary Pompeo uh, up close and personal for over a year now, uh, that he was actually one of the first administration officials way back in February 
to to raise the alarm bells and say and to say that the Chinese government was not being open and transparent like we needed with the data, uh, like we would need to to verify what was going on with the pandemic. Um, so Secretary Pompeo has been clear and consistent. He's been saying this for quite some time. And now uh, we know President Trump is taking a whole of America approach. Uh, we have many um, uh, businesses, uh, many government officials who are looking at our supply chains, who are looking at America now producing uh, things that are important to American national security here. You know, really this pandemic has has highlighted uh, just how correct I think President Trump has been since he, since he began campaigning for the office in 2015. Um, about the need to protect our borders, uh, to bring uh, crucial manufacturing home, and for America, importantly, for America to have reciprocal relationships around the world, to have an even playing field. And that's what we're calling for in our relationship with China, whether it's in trade or whether it's working on this pandemic or national security issues. We want uh, our diplomats in China to be treated the same way that their diplomats here are treated, same for our journalists. So what we want, we know that uh, America and China are geostrategic competitors. That's obvious to the world. That's fine. We, we, we can be in competition. We can work in certain areas. We'll disagree in other areas. But while we are strategic competitors, it needs to be a level playing field. It needs to be a relationship of reciprocity. And that's all we're seeking to do is to balance out the field. So, Morgan, in uh, today's uh, press conference, uh, the secretary mentioned, I think it's about $900 million has been committed internationally yeah. to support, you know, different countries, coronavirus response and so forth. It's interesting. Uh, the, I've seen criticism in both directions. I've seen people saying, oh, this is not nearly enough. We need to help more. And I've also seen the criticism. Why are we spending, you know, in this case, it's $900 million that's, that's or perhaps more that's been committed. Why is that not focusing on the U.S.? What, what is the approach here? Uh, good question. So um, if $900 million isn't enough, um, I would challenge you to find any other country in the world that is as generous as the American taxpayer. Let me just back up and put this in, in, into context for your viewers. Over the past two decades, just the past two decades, uh, the generosity of the American people has been so prevalent in global public health. We have given over the past two decades over $140 billion to global public health. The global public health infrastructure that exists today is largely funded by the American taxpayer. There is no country in the world that even comes close. We saw earlier this week that there was an EU pledging conference as it relates to finding uh, uh, solutions to this um, pandemic. Uh, we saw that the Chinese sent a representative and they didn't pony up a dime, right? So America uh, continues to be, I mean, these are cold hard numbers. America continues to be the most generation, generous nation on the planet by a wide margin. And we will be. But the one thing that the Trump administration calls for is to be good stewards of American taxpayer dollars. We want to use them wisely. So I don't think that the uh, generosity of the American people are ever in question. We've committed, as you pointed out, today we just added new funds. So it's over $900 million in funds directly related to COVID-19. Uh, some countries that would be considered our, our worst enemies, we've offered to help them because we want to help people around the world uh, uh, recover from COVID-19. No matter what sort of issue we may have with the government, we don't have it with people with the people of those of those nations. So we know that America will lead the world in COVID-19 recovery. We will lead it from uh, from a global health perspective, and we will lead it from an economic perspective. Morgan, just quickly before we finish up, what about to folks who feel this is this is uh, too much spending given the economic challenges that we're going to face imminently? Yeah, that that is certainly a, a very worthwhile and robust debate that will happen in Washington am, amongst uh, our appropriators, which is of course uh, the members of Congress. They have allocated uh, these funds to us, and our job at the State Department is when these funds are allocated to be good stewards of American taxpayer dollars, and that's what we'll do. Fantastic. Any final words before we finish up? I just want to tie it back to your first question, uh, talking about uh, Asian. Uh, 
uh, and Pacific uh, uh, Heritage Month uh, here in America for for Americans of those of those uh, descents. Um, one of the you know beautiful things about America um, are our immigrants who uh, who come here, who become entrepreneurs, who thrive. Uh, it's just such a, a crucial part of the fabric of the State Department and of the fabric of American life. And um, just want to continue again to to recognize those those people of of Asian descent um, and their contributions to American society, while at the same time always remembering those early heroes in China, those doctors and scientists, some of them who gave up their lives, who were disappeared by the Chinese government. They knew the risk that they were taking, but they took it to try and save the world from this pandemic. And we want their families to know we remember them. You know, very powerful words, and I know that uh, the, are the founders of the Epic Times and you know my boss are going to be very, very happy to hear what you just said. Such a pleasure to have you on, Morgan. It's great. I hope to be back soon.